And consequently, those of us that cannot live comfortably on the salary and compensation that we received from our legislative responsibilities have other careers that we have to pursue. And it is almost impossible for any of us to sit through a legislative session and not have some piece of legislation come before us that does not in some way touch or incidentally come in contact with what we do professionally or what we do personally. So I suggest to you that that is one of the inherent challenges that we have in a part-time citizen legislature. And we rely upon the personal integrity of each member of this body to determine when it is appropriate to exercise the Rule 36. But I can say that that is a matter of personal conscience and we do not need a conscience of the body suggesting to us what may have been inappropriate in their myopic eyes. So I suggest to you, Mr. President, there were empirical financial reasons that the bills were referred to the Finance Committee dealing with higher education. There is no conflict of interest, and I suggest to you that there are many, many opportunities that come before us where we have to exercise our good, good judgment. And I say with Mr. President, it was not with any degree of pride uh, that I make these comments, but I have never done something like this in 26 years, but I've never had a shot taken at me like that in the media either. Thank you, Senator. The Senator from Fairfax City, Senator Peterson. Ladies and gentlemen, speak to the measure as a point of personal privilege. Ladies and gentlemen, I was the person that's being referred to in this speech. Uh, I noted that Senator Norman, uh, the gentleman from James City County, has a position teaching at William & Mary University, or College of William & Mary. And I noted that fact that the bills were being sent to a subcommittee that he was chairing. So I'll take the blame. I'm the petulant child. But you know what, at the end of the day, I don't mind taking blame sometimes. You know, I came down here to represent the people in my district, and access to college, access to higher education, affordability, those are critical issues. And those issues didn't get a fair hearing. I'm sorry, but they didn't. You all want to throw me under the bus, throw me under the bus. Because at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. I got to go home and explain to people, did I fight for you or did I not? Yeah, I took some hits. You know what, I apologize. I probably said something I should have. I lost my temper. But I've also served with people that have gotten in trouble. Now, not for this, but let's not pretend this body has never been touched by investigations which have called into question our morals and our ethics, okay? Let's not pretend that everything is self-governance. At the end of the day, we have to answer for ourselves. I understand that, and I agree with, completely with the gentleman that we have to make a living. But I also know when you work for an employer and then you put yourself in a position of supervising that employer, that puts you in an inherently ticklish position. So I congratulate the gentleman for negotiating that. I don't know if I could. And I'll take the blame for using the words conflict of interest and speaking to the media. I'll take the blame. I'll take the hit. I don't apologize for representing my constituents. Not at all. I've tried to raise this issue. I don't feel like the issue had a fair hearing. I'll be back here next year. We'll try it again. And again, my apologies to the gentleman. Thank you, Senator. Is there any other business to come before the sen this senior senator from Fairfax County, Senator Sasslaw? Point of personal privilege. The senator has the floor. L let me just inform the senator from F Fairfax City. Every one of us in here is here representing our constituents. You're not the only one. And uh, quite frankly, uh, I've never in all the years I've been here run into a situation like this. But I can tell you I'm pretty conscious and I'm sure the other 39 of you are on representing your constituents. And quite frankly, uh, my constituents want to go through college in four years. They don't want to strap these universities so they can, you know, wind up having to cut courses, which is what happened in 1998 when we froze tuition and they started cutting courses. And I got calls from my, my constituents saying, my kid's got to go nine semesters. Where's my savings? Well, there wasn't any, all right? 
and the universities don't need us micromanaging them. And the senator from James City County knows this. And quite frankly, he's done a pretty darn good job of making sure that these universities are viable and functioning well. So I would just say to you or anyone else in here uh, that no one senator has a lock or a monopoly on just representing their constituents. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. The clerk will please report.